ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. Solomon, the wisest king who ever lived, wrote in Proverbs 25, 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to discuss the wise shall understand. Gary Timmy is here to discuss what I feel is one of the important <coughs> biblical subjects. Mm -hmm. Wisdom. You know, J.R., Jesus said, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And we tend to, uh, I think, to underestimate the word. We look at heaven and earth and, and think how wonderful they are. But Jesus puts his word on an equal footing with heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And that means that there must be things in here we haven't even begun to see. Now, the question we're going to address today is, what's the process of seeing the hidden things in God's word? Well said. You know, the Jewish rabbis and the sages of ancient Israel had four levels of interpretation for the scripture. First, there was the Peshat level. That is the primary interpretation of scripture, the black and white of the book, the stories of uh, uh, the Old Testament. Then there is the remiz um, level of study, which is the hint level, the practical ins instructions for intellectuals, and uh, we, we would call that practical application of Scripture. And uh, for that, the Mishnah, or, or pardon me, the Gemara was given. And then comes the Drosh level, uh, meaning to thresh, uh, yields special wisdom for political um, and religious leaders. And this is taught in the Mishnah. So we have the Peshet, the Ramez, and the Drosh. And the Midrash, of course, is the Drosh level. Mm -hmm. But there is another level to studying the scriptures, and the rabbis called it the Sod level. This is the mystical level. This is the level you see just before sunrise in the morning when you look at the eastern horizon, and you see uh, the rays of the sun shining up over the horizon, and you know there's a big ball of fire somewhere on the other side of that horizon, though you cannot yet see it, you can see the glory of it. And that's the sowed level of Scripture. Mm. And on today's Prophecy in the News, we want to discuss this sowed level and how to get there. Yeah, and, and you know, J.R., it's really not a secret. <laughs> there, there's mm -hmm. nothing secret about it. Uh, uh, the wise men of history tend to be people that we place on a pedestal, but in fact, diligent pursuit of God's Word is the central feature of wisdom. Along with that, of course, comes obedience, faithfulness, prayer, application of the Word, and so forth and so on. But diligent study produces wisdom. And you know, there are very few people who diligently study, or who are driven to, to it, I guess you could say. Yes. This old level, according to the rabbis, um, is that final plateau that one reaches when assimilating the Word of God. And in order to reach it, you, you know, you've got to know this book from one end to the other, from Genesis to Revelation. You've got to have read it, memorized it, so to speak, studied it for years, until finally you reach the place where you can reach out and grab this scripture and reach over and grab this one and put them together and find something that you formerly did not know or understand. This is the sowed level. Mm -hmm. And there are many places in the Bible where it talks about the wise shall understand. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, I think, is one of the important places that says that we should study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the key word there, Gary, is study. Mm -hmm. Diligent study. And you know, J.R., as you've said many times, uh, particularly biblical prophecy is not a, uh, a beginning study. It's a graduate uh, course. That's right. Because it deals with implication. It deals with uh, linking together ideas that lie beneath the surface of the text. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see many people, and you and I over the years have seen a number of people who have attempted 
early in their Christian walk, before they really got to know the Word, they've attempted to render uh, prophetic interpretations, and they missed the mark simply because they didn't yet have the tools at hand. Mm -hmm. uh, the inability to assimilate and put together in, like a puzzle uh, the pieces in their proper places. Um, it's important, I think, that we understand that most Christians deal just with the practical application of Scripture. Most sermons are on practical application of Scripture. And this is not to diminish the importance of practical application. Mm -hmm. But most Christians never get beyond the primary interpretation and the practical application of Scripture. I think that the Bible, when referring to the wise, refers to those people who've gone beyond the practical application of Scripture to this prophetic implications to the sowed level of the Word of God. Proverbs is an excellent example of this. Uh, <clears throat> you know, J.R., many, many people think of Proverbs as a, uh, a series of instructions to the young man in his spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. And they are wonderful instructions. But there is a level in Proverbs that there is a, a secret or a prophetic level. And, and I believe Solomon uh, refers to it in uh, chapter 1 of Proverbs, verses 5 and 6, a wise man will hear. I love that. Mm -hmm. That implies that he's teachable. He's yes. not going to reject something. He's going to think about it. He's going to incorporate it and think about it. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. In other words, he's going to take in information. And then verse 6 says, To understand a proverb, the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. Uh, we're not talking about mysticism here at all. Yes, that's right. We're talking about the leading of the Lord and the willingness to be taught. And I think that's the key thing in my mind. No, we readily admit that we see through a glass darkly, as the Apostle Paul referred to it. Now, there are mystical subjects in the Bible that we are incapable of experiencing, but does that mean that we should shun the study entirely just because we cannot understand it? No. As we look back at history, we know that men rode horses for nearly 6,000 years. Only in this century have men ridden a rocket to the moon. The reason men have been able to increase knowledge is that they have reached the place where they are finally able, after 6,000 years of accumulating knowledge, to begin to put it all together. And uh, the, this knowledge is of subjects that we know little about. No scientific investigator ever completely understood his subject until he explored it. Great inventions, for example, came out of mental explorations of little-known concepts until finally one day, groping in the darkness, they found a switch and flipped it, and the light felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, J.R., those men in history, uh, the vast majority of them have been believers, followers of the Lord, uh, because this has given them with the wisdom of basic uh, and basic understanding of God's creation. Yes. Solomon, of course, had wisdom because he asked God for it. Right. And God made him wise. And the Bible tells us that God is willing to give us wisdom. In uh, James 1, 5, he is willing to give to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Just ask for wisdom if you lack it. Now, this wisdom, of course, does not just come as God opens up your head and pours it in. You first have to study and be prepared to use that wisdom. Let's take the Romans for a moment. The Romans should have invented the combustion engine, didn't, shouldn't they? But they didn't. But did they, they didn't. <laughs> and it's because, as you and I have mentioned in our conversations, that God concealed that. Uh, the Romans had the, the crankshaft, the crank, the piston and cylinder. They had the flywheel. They understood inertia. They had uh, reducing gears. Uh, they had, they understood the power of steam. Mm -hmm. Now, had they just put all these together, they would have had a steam engine. Easily. It was within their grasp. They knew metals, metallurgy, etc. And from the steam engine to the internal combustion engine is just a very short hop. Because if you, if you learn to inject a combustible into a steam cylinder and, and set it off, now you've got an engine. Mm -hmm. But God concealed it because had he not, history would have raced along yes. and come to a conclusion long, but man might have destroyed himself early in the game. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, if men had been able to put together an atomic bomb uh, a thousand years ago, we'd be in real trouble. Right? Real what trouble. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> would ruin the planet. And so you can see that it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. You remember what God said to Daniel in chapter 12, verse 4? Shut up the book and seal the words. Daniel, some of the things you know are going to be lost to history. We just don't want to write them down. He said this to John also mm -hmm. when John heard seven thunders utter. He says, don't write what the seven thunders uttered. There was a reason God wanted to do that. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. And, uh, you know, Gary, uh, even, even in the ancient days of the Bible, we learn about the wise men and kings, for example, many kings didn't know how to read, but they gathered around them wise men. And one of the things that made these men wise was that they could read and write. Mm. We have a lot more to talk about. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. We want to talk to you about wisdom. The wise shall understand. There are several verses throughout the Old and New Testaments that give us a glimpse into something beyond the average. For example, in uh, Exodus chapter 36, verse 1, we are told that certain men were given wisdom of God in order to make or build the various implements of the tabernacle. Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. And then there's Genesis 41, when Joseph stood before Pharaoh and gave him the interpretation of his dream. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Wisdom is a gift, Gary. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of the important things we should understand. Certainly it comes at the end of a long time of study to yes. be able to assimilate the various <clears throat> things we read and, and put away in our hearts and minds in the Bible, but in the finality of it, this walk into fields of new experience has to be a gift of God. Mm. We were talking uh, during the break about uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Joseph in Egypt <clears throat> had the advantage of having the long history from Shem through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, and, and then down to himself, having been uh, a, an heir uh, to uh, mm -hmm. writing given by God, <clears throat> that we call it the Semitic languages, uh, but it's, it's a virtual certainty that all of these men knew how to write mm -hmm. and how to read, and they recorded things, and they were given knowledge that they wrote down faithfully. Uh, and by the time we come to Joseph in Scripture, uh, we come to a man who, when he is captured, taken to the house of Pharaoh, is able to incorporate the language of Egypt, able to uh, reveal secrets. In fact, the, uh, the priest of On, or Memphis, gave uh, Joseph the name Revealer of Secrets. And it's not just simply because he could reveal dreams, it's because he was a student. He had a foundation of wisdom, and let's call it scriptural wisdom. And God-given wisdom. God-given you know? wisdom. Um, the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32 is a good, excellent example of a wise man. Moses had a knowledge beyond the average, the ordinary. When God told Moses to write this song and give it to the Jewish people, it was a prophecy of God's judgment upon them and their latter end. And remember in the sixth verse, Moses writes, beginning the verse with a hay, an mm -hmm. enlarged hay, twice the size of the regular sizes of the letters in the text. Mm -hmm. And then just a few verses later, down in verse 29, Moses writes, Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. So there was a special wisdom associated with being able to understand the mm -hmm. song of Moses. And of course, when we get to heaven, we're told in Revelation 15, 2 and 3, that we will sing the song of Moses. So there is a special prophetic wisdom that is attached to it. On the other hand, in Psalm 107, we have seven backward noons. Now in Deuteronomy, in the Song of Moses, we have the enlarged hay. In Psalm 107, we have seven reverse noons that are turned around backwards. These are, that's the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 
And we, after going through all of that, I mean, verse 43, it finally comes down to the, uh, to the final noon, and a couple of verses later it says, Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand. Mm. So, Gary, there is a m metaphysical wisdom, a, a, a level <clears throat> of scriptural interpretation that is just above the ordinary, and that is the wisdom that God imparts to those who seek it. And it's a wisdom born of, let's put it this way, foundational knowledge. Uh, yes. uh, Jesus laid the foundation for our salvation, and we build upon those things. The Old Testament is foundational. Uh, and essentially, once you have that foundation, then God is able to work through you to produce or to advance your state of wisdom. And J.R., I think part of that is, is devotional, too. That is, the, to the saint truly devoted to God, uh, not only is there scriptural wisdom, but the interpretation of dreams, I believe, is a possibility on occasion. We have numbers of historical incidents involving missionaries in the field who were given information through dreams. and and through visions, uh, uh, and I believe that uh, had they not had this, this, the foundation and, and the rigorous discipline of Scripture, uh, these men would never been, have been able to be moved of God the way they were. And now, my opinion is that there is a vast difference between the wise man of Scripture, of whom the Bible says the wise shall understand, and the medicine man uh, with his entrails <clears throat> and his being. Oh, yes. Huge difference, uh, and, and it's scriptural, I think. For example, the Romans had their priests, the priest of the house of Caesar, and they would, with great ceremony, they would slay a goat in public, and they would cut open the carcass of the goat and they remove the liver and the entrails, and they would examine these and, and uh, divine the future. And these men were thought to be very, very wise. You may note that their knowledge has died. It no longer exists. They were simply um, occultic, mystical shamans. That is, the, there was no real basis uh, in truth in what they did. The devil's counterfeit. Devil's counterfeit, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1, Solomon the wise writes, Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. In other words, wisdom will give you confidence. Knowledge will give you confidence. If you're able to understand that which the average person does not understand because of your years of study, because of God's imparting this special wisdom to you, it gives you confidence in life. Some folks have an overabundant supply of this confidence. We call that conceit. Yeah. And you know, Gary, there are a lot of people who become so intellectual that they look down their noses at other people and become very impatient with the average person because you don't, they don't snap to it and understand what I'm talking about, and so you're, you're just a bunch of dummies. Uh, you know, Moses was an ex excellent example of this, don't you think? Oh, he was. <laughs> you know, it's fascinating that Moses, uh, uh, the Lord allowed him to have this flaw. <clears throat> Graciously allowed Moses to be a flawed man, I think uh, uh, mostly for the purpose of spiritual instruction. Mm -hmm. but, but Moses, of course, struck the rock twice. He was so angry at the continual grumbling and misery of his people, their lack of faith, yeah. he couldn't stand it any longer. And you know, he had communed with God. I am yes. quite certain that he had special wisdom. And that uh, had, had a tendency to make him a little bit on the conceited side. Right. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians 13. He said, Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Do you know any ministers that uh, go around trying to clean everybody else's plows because <laughs> nobody seems to know what, how much, as much as he knows, and he knows it all, and nobody else knows anything, and so I'm just going to straighten out all you wicked uh, ministers. Your motives are impure. You're this or that, you know. I, I've met ministers like that, haven't you? I have indeed. You know, even the great apostle Paul said, I do not count myself to have apprehended. I don't count myself to be spiritually arrived. I'm yes. still pursuing the course. And he had the right attitude. 
Right. And, and Paul in 1 Corinthians 16 said, uh, For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You know, the balance, J.R., is on the one hand, we do have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. On the other, we mustn't be vociferous about it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. First of all, you must study to show yourself approved. Before you know the Bible, you cannot advance to a higher level of interpretation. Secondly, you need to pray for wisdom. Wisdom is not given unless it is prayed for. Thirdly, Daniel did not have the indwelling Holy Spirit, so when he obtained special knowledge or wisdom, uh, he, he got it from an angel who was sent to him. But Jesus said, I send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. In fact, he said, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. This is the clue to gaining this special wisdom.